All right, taking a little linear algebra break. We're moving on to combinatorics with this problem. What's going on in this problem is we're gonna draw 10 lines in a plane and we wanna know how many regions those 10 lines would divide the plane into. It's actually a really famous mathematical question. In order to make this fair for a test, they have to put some criteria on these lines. The first is they tell you that no two of the lines are parallel. So any pair of the lines intersect, and I guess because they're lines in exactly one point. And then they tell you that no three of the lines have a common point. So that tells you that these intersections that we talked about up here are all distinct. So for answering this question, I think the obvious strategy and what I'm gonna do is just consider smaller cases. We'll keep track of the number of lines and the number of regions when we have a lot less than 10 lines and hopefully we'll be able to develop some sort of a pattern and extrapolate that pattern to guess how many regions we'll have when we have 10 lines. And you might not like me using that word guess. So what I'll do towards the end of this video is I'll explain why that pattern must hold. So rather than assuming that the pattern holds and guessing at the answer, we're showing that the pattern holds and deducing the answer maybe. Anyways, let's get started. If you had no lines, the plane is just one big region. But once you draw your first line, you're dividing the plane up into two different regions. What if you had two lines? You can probably see that you'd have four regions. Here's one of the two lines. Here's the second of the two lines. We've got four different regions. One, two, three, four. Where things get a little bit interesting is if you have three lines, it's still a small enough case that it's easy enough to draw. Just be careful when you draw it. We know that any pair of lines are gonna intersect. Make sure you picture those intersections. You wouldn't wanna draw your third line like this where the point of intersection is somewhere up here outside of your picture. Maybe instead I can draw my third line something like this. Now all we have to do is count our different regions. See, we got one out here, two over here, three up here, four down here, five over here, six over here, and then the one in the middle gives us seven. If we have three lines, we've divided the plane up into seven different regions. Drawing that fourth line gets kind of messy. We can do it and I will do it, but before we do it, it might be worth taking a look at these values and seeing if we can kind of guess at what pattern's going on here. If you've done much combinatorics, you might know to not just look at these values, but to kind of look at the difference in these values. And if you do that, you might recognize that when we added our first line, we increased the number of regions by one. And when we added our second line, we increased the number of regions by two. And just now when we added our third line, we increased the number of regions by three. It sure looks like when we add our fourth line, we're gonna increase the number of regions by four and have a total of 11 regions. Turns out that is the case. And depending on your artistry, you can probably draw that case and just count the number of regions. But at that point, you're kind of getting to the limit of what you can reasonably draw and count on the pressure of a test. So to go any further, we really have to rely on this pattern continuing, which might feel like a little bit of blind faith. We have to trust that when there's five lines, we'd increase the number of regions by five, giving us 16 total. And when we had six lines, we'd add six to this sum, giving us 22 total. After drawing our seventh line, we'd have 29 regions because we added seven. And then when we add eight, nine, and 10, we'd have 37, 46, and 56 regions respectively. If this pattern holds, the number of regions that we would have after drawing our 10th line is exactly 56. 56 is one of the answers, so you're probably feeling good enough about that to fill that in and move on. Turns out that is the correct answer here, but I think it's worth spending a little bit more time on this problem. The first thing I wanna point out is that it'd be a real bummer if you messed up the arithmetic here, right? Anyone taking this test knows that 37 plus nine is 46, but under the pressure of a test, it would certainly be possible to say that 37 plus nine is 48 or something and end up with the wrong answer. And because some of these answers are so close, a tiny arithmetic mistake could cause you to fill in the answer incorrectly. So since we really don't care how many regions there are for any number of lines other than 10, we really don't have to calculate all these partial sums. We can just recognize that our answer here is made up of the first region that we had plus the sum of the integers from one up to 10. You might know that the sum of the integers from one up to n has a formula. It's always n times n plus one over two. So in this case, n is equal to 10. So it's 10 times 11 over two. In other words, five times 11. In other words, 55. Be careful, the answer is not 55. The purple sum is 55. The answer is one plus that 55 or 56. If you don't have this formula memorized, it's probably worth memorizing because it's pretty easy to memorize. But better than memorizing it is understanding where it comes from. Because if you understand where it comes from, you can sort of manipulate it a little bit to get the sum of any arithmetic sequence. So one way of thinking about where it comes from, I talked about in a previous video, I think I called it Gauss's method. And the idea there is you copy this sum and write it directly beneath the original sum, but write it in descending order. So 10 plus nine plus eight, all the way down to one. 
The advantage of doing that is then we can sum the columns. 1 plus 10 gives me 11, 2 plus 9 gives me 11, 3 plus 8 gives me 11, and so on. Adding up a bunch of 11s is a lot easier than adding up the integers from 1 to 10. I just need to know how many 11s I have. I've got 10 of them because the numbers up here kind of number my columns. So this sum right here is just 10 times 11, in other words, 110. But note that this sum came from two copies of the sum in question. So in order to figure out the sum in question, I have to take this 110 and divide it by 2, which is what gave me this 55. Suppose there's some different use case. We have to sum the odd numbers from 3 to 63. This formula wouldn't help you, or at least not directly, but maybe you could make a similar argument and figure out that sum. Anyways, this method might help with the arithmetic, but that wasn't the main point that I wanted to make. The main point that I wanted to make is understanding why this pattern holds. Because if you understand why this pattern holds, it might help you develop a different pattern for a different problem on your test. And it also prevents you from kind of guessing at the answer, hoping that the pattern will continue to hold for cases too large to draw. So to show why this pattern holds, I wanna draw a fourth line. It doesn't matter where that fourth line lives in this picture, you just have to make sure that all of your points of intersection are pictured. So since there's already three lines out here, I know that this fourth line must intersect three different lines. For the sake of making it visible, maybe I'll start my line way up here and I'll end my line somewhere down here. I shouldn't draw points because these aren't line segments, they're lines, so maybe I make these arrows. I'm gonna draw this line really slowly. I'm going to start drawing it up here, and I'm going to continue drawing it until I get to my first point of intersection, and then I'm going to stop and put the rest on hold. Why did I do that? Because already this line has increased the number of regions that I have. The region that I formerly called region 2, made up by these blue, red, and green line segments, has been split into two different regions by this brown segment. Maybe I'll call them 2 and 2A, two sure. The portion of this new line up to my first point of intersection added a new region. If I now continue drawing this line until I hit my next point of intersection, I'll see that the exact same thing happened. This region, formerly known as region 1, has been split into two. Maybe I'll call them 1 and 1a. Same thing happens when I continue drawing this line to my next point of intersection. Region formerly called 6 is now 6 and 6a. I've created another region. Finally, from my last point of intersection to the end of the line that I'm drawing, I traverse what used to be called region 5 and split it into 5 and 5a. Rather than consider the total number of regions here, which will end up being 11, it's easier to see that we just added four regions to our previous total. Why do we add four? Because we split regions 2, 1, 6, and 5 into 2 and 2a, 1 and 1a, 6 and 6a, 5 and 5a. But if I didn't draw the line, how would I know that there were four regions that were split? Well, to figure that out, all you have to do is think about how many regions the line will traverse. The line will always start, in big old air quotes, because lines don't start, in one of the regions. And then it'll always move to another region each time it crosses a line. When I'm drawing my fourth line, there's already three lines out there. So it has to cross three lines. So I start out in one region, and then I move to a new region each time I cross one of these three lines. This fourth line is going to traverse four different regions, one more than the number of lines that existed. It's going to split each of those regions into two, so it's going to add four to my total count of regions. If you were to draw this fifth line, which I don't recommend you do, but if you did, you'd start it in some region, and it would stay in that region until it intersected a line. And each time it intersected a line, it would move into a new region. Since there's four lines out there, it would traverse five regions in total, splitting each of them in two, adding five to my total count of regions. We don't have to guess that the total number of regions increases by n when we draw our nth line. We can deduce that pattern by thinking about the regions that the line traverses and how it only switches between regions when it intersects a line. That's why this information was so important from the start. This allows us to figure out how many lines our new line will intersect and therefore how many regions it'll traverse and therefore how many new regions we'll create. In case you're curious, if you look up at these answers here, I suspect this 55 came from someone forgetting to add this one right here. This 46 came from the student who stopped after drawing nine lines, who got a little bit confused in the pattern perhaps. The 45 is one less than 46, so it's someone who forgot this one and stopped at nine instead of 10. And the 36, I guess that would be someone who forgot the one and stopped after eight, or maybe they just needed a fifth answer. I'm not sure.